welcome everyone and welcome to the Food and Beer Whispers. I'm your host, uh, James P. Madonna of uh, Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And I am with my uh, co host here, uh, uh, Tom Mulvihill, the Beer Whisperer. In the first video, you saw the food section of the Food and Beer Whisper in video one. Now, video two, we are going to uh, hear reviews by Tom Mulvihill, the Beer Whisperer, and he will take over. Tom, how you feeling today? How you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm tired, but, but other than that, good. It seems like it's kind of a never-ending thing, but, but I got a little bit of a break, so I wanted to do a couple beers with you. Okay, okay. The first beer you pop. What, tell us, the folks, about this beer. Craft beer. This is uh, a strawberry blonde ale with ginger. Let me pour it for you. Wow, you. wow, with ginger. Wow, that it's, sounds really tasty. It's actually interesting. As a whole... I'm not a real fan of the fruit beer, uh, but this one's interesting. Uh, it's, it's a nice light summer brew. It is 5.2%, so it falls in that session ale category. Uh, it's for uh, Buffalo Bills Brewery, and they're kind of a, a brewer, brew pub, brewery restaurant, they call it on their website, out of Hayward, California. Oh, wow. And, and basically, here's the thing with this one. Uh, it says, brewed and bottled by an independent Brewers United Corporation, Seattle, Washington. Well, what that means basically is, is, is this, this is what's referred to as a contract brew, which means the Buffalo Bills folks, uh, generally anyway, uh, formulate a recipe and, and then they contract this brewer uh, to brew this for them. So this is brewed for them. It's not brewed by them. Does that make sense to you? Um. Well, it, it, hopefully it's brewed for them to their specifications. Well, it is, and, and that's the point of the contract brew. It's, it's they, they, for their specific brew pub. They also have a blueberry ale that I've had before. Uh, they do have a, had a blueberry, uh, oatmeal blueberry stout that's interesting I've had before. And this is a strawberry blonde ale with ginger. Well, anybody... Yeah, this is what's referred to as a contract brew. Now, anybody with some bucks can start their own craft beer company by doing this very easily. Just finding oh. somebody uh, somebody else's brewery and contract it out. But you gotta you gotta make periodic visits to make sure that your beers and ales and stouts or whatever oh. are made to your high quality, high standard specifications. That's exactly right, and and you'd be surprised to know how many of them are out there. Um, there's a lot of established brewers, and I'm not going to mention any names. I'll let people do the research on their own, but because a lot of them they don't want it to get out. But there's a lot of established brewers that uh, only have a capacity to do so much. So a lot of times when they do specialty ales, they'll hire some of the bigger brewers to to, to brew that for them. And then, then slap their label on it. So the contract brew isn't anything new. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. And you gave all the specifications, all the numbers on this ale? Well, it's 5.2%. They don't list the IBUs, the International Bitterness Units, but this is kind of a brilliant... Um, well, and as they say, as the, as the snobs will say, it's got a beautiful nose. Uh, uh, the, <laughs> the aroma is quite amazing, actually. It's... it's um, Great big strawberry aroma with just a hint of the ginger. Generally, when you when you talk about the nose of the beer, the aromas, you're, what you're getting are hops. But in this case, I'm getting the fruit. I'm getting the, the strawberry and the ginger most. I love strawberry. I love berries in general. And I love ginger. Very medicinal. And I, I think it's it, it, look, it sounds like a fantastic combination. It actually is. I mean, um, my personal issue with, with fruit beers is what a lot of people like about them is that um, I don't like them generally because I don't want to taste heavy fruit. A lot of them are too overpowering. Some of them get a little sweet and syrupy. Now, this one doesn't actually. It's just, uh, uh, and, and it's kind of deceiving because the nose is so big on the strawberry that you think it, it's going to wash your, down your palate that way, but it does not. This has a light strawberry taste, and, and you you know in much in much the same way that you get the hops in the finish. With this one, you get the ginger right at the tip of your tongue, right at the end. And it, it, it's really just 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 beautiful. Wow. 
Well, since you, since you're like me, since you're like me, and you don't like things that are too sweet, and you're giving it the A-OK, -okay, uh, it's a it's yeah. A good actually, I'm, I'm, I was yeah. I'm, I'm surprised that I, I do like it as much as I do. I mean, it's not one that I'd buy a lot of, but I'm certainly enjoying the ones that I have. And I don't know if you can tell here. We've only been on the air a few minutes. I'm already over halfway done with this baby. It's just wow. that good. So I could I could be accurate in uh, in stating that this is a very tasty and refreshing summer craft brew. It, it is. A beautiful, a beautiful, uh, see the strawberries on the label, and, and it, it, the combination is very applicable to summer. I mean, it's like, it's like an ale with lemon in it, you know, Re refreshing, you got strawberry and ginger, and uh, you think of ginger, you think of ginger ale, you know, uh, and things of that nature. Ginger beer, Jamaican-style ginger beer, which is not real beer. It's just simply ginger ale oh, right. with, with, with no sugar in it, or a lot less sugar in it, the way ginger yeah. ale is supposed to be. But it looks like a really great, su refreshing summer beer. Ale. Yeah, and ale. I, I think it, it, it's the ginger that really makes this one. It really does. I mean, it's I mean, it's not overpowering, uh, but 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 it is there. You can feel it. It's very nice, and it's the ginger that really makes it extremely refreshing. Yeah. Um. Um. Well, you know, not to change the subject, but. But food and beer snobs love to use the word complexity. I ah, noticed. Yes. That. Oh, the complexity of flavors when I use truffle oil or I cook with truffles, it costs hundreds of dollars an ounce. Oh, the complexity of this micro brew. Oh, the flavors of the mixtures of the <laughs> uh, 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 of all the ingredients. This I could taste this, but this is more overpowering than that. And with complexities, they like to use that word. To be sophisticated. Yeah, I, I, you know, I use the word from time to time too, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm more of a working man's beer beer guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> and, right. If you want a wine style review, there's other folks you can listen to, and some people yeah. do like more of the, you know. Well. Uh, so some people aren't into my irreverent style, let's just say. But, but uh, you know, for me, it's, it's all about the pleasure of the beer. It's not about, it, 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 it's not about collecting beer just to look cool. It's about the, the flavor. It's about the pleasure. For me, it's all pure enjoyment. Well, you know what they're doing, where they got this all from, the, uh, the beer connoisseurs want to become like the wine connoisseurs. They want yeah. they want the sophistication and the elitism and the and the uh, uh, you know the the pretension that the wine tasters have had for many decades, and they want That's to follow. Exactly. They want to follow that, which is fine, because I always said that the uh, the evolution of craft beer going from micro brew breweries to the I guess mass produced craft beer. And the amount of craft breweries around the United States are immense compared to the way it used to be. I'm very impressed and very excited by the variety of craft beer that's out there. And the quality has gone higher because of the, the uh, vigorous competition that we have now with the craft breweries. And that's all a positive thing. And I love the flavor of a high quality craft beer or ale or stout or porter. Uh, I love it. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from it, but I am not going to, uh, I'm not going to add a pretension and elitism to a simple science project of a soup of grains that just happens to be fermented. That's it. You add ingredients, you mix and, you know, you, you, you eat, omit certain things, you add new things. You, chop, you try out the flavor, and you, you either like it or love it, or you don't like it, or you can take it or leave it, or you can hate it. There's, no, there's nothing elitist, you know, or hoity-toity, which is a funny term, about craft beer. You know? Well, I've been saying since the mid-90s, I mean, that, that a, a, a good craft beer has all the complexity and nuances of a fine wine. Now, I believe that. I, I've been saying that for decades now. Yes, but it uh, does. But, but I don't like the idea of it being, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
in an elite beverage. You know, it, it is a working man's beverage, and it should remain that way. Uh, I, I don't, I don't begrudge those other folks. I mean, if that's the direction you want to take it, I, I, I choose not to. Um, you know, just because I don't use certain words or say certain things doesn't mean I'm not as knowledgeable. But uh, I, I love, uh, for me, it's more about passion than trying to be cool. And, and there is a, a young subset of, you know, the, the beer hipsters that are more about being cool and just drinking certain things. And, and I'm all about the passion and the love for beer. Yeah, it's it, the, the putting elitism into food recipes and restaurants and, and craft beer is similar to the man who is self-conscious if he has money and he's driving around in an electric Chevy Volt or a, 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 a hybrid car instead of driving around in a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a BMW or a Mercedes. He's self-conscious about being seen in a modest economy car because he he has a, he's worried about his image. There's, there's something lacking in the individual. Maybe there is an insecurity there where the uh, elitist uh, portrayal, uh, the elite portrayal of elitism makes him feel better about himself, you know, perhaps. You know what I mean? But we don't care. We tell it like it is. And I like my Honda that I ride around in, my older Honda, and it gets me where I want to go. It's reliable. And I basically, that is it. Now, I want to say one thing before we, we close uh, video number two of this uh, Food and, uh, and Beer Whisperer show. Today um, is Wednesday, and uh, Wednesday is usually when I have my big meeting with the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, and we, we plan out for Saturday's new show. Well, someone took up two parking spaces, and I... It really pisses me off when people that think they're more special than others choose to take up two parking spaces because they happen to be ill-mannered, selfish, and they think they're better than others. They, it could be somebody with a BMW, a Mercedes, a Corvette, a Ferrari, whatever, taking up two parking spaces. Or it could be somebody who has a, a regular car that happens to be selfish, and of course the person did not come out because I would have said something to them. But I hate people that take up two parking spaces. Talk about pretension. I, I tell people like that, I hope you don't fuck like you park. You'll never get it in. <laughs> oh, man, that was that was good. Oh, answer me <laughs> this, uh, Tom Mulvihill. Yes, I'm sir. Out, of, out of curiosity, is there a difference between porter and stouts? Yes. Uh, because a, an individual had mentioned that do not compare the Polish porter with Guinness Stout, and I had a hard time yeah, understanding it, that. It, it is a completely different beer. It, it is hard to, uh, it, it, it is subtle differences, but yeah, you know, a Polish type porter is quite different from an Irish Stout. It's got a different viscosity, a different mouthfeel. Um, it, it, it is different, it is a, 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 a very different style of beer. Even yes. though coloration may be the same. Yeah, you know, it's funny, it's like that with many styles. Uh, you know, there, there are many beers even within the same style that you really can't compare because they are, they're, they're, they're too different. For instance, even, even amongst a, a style we do a lot of here, um, IPAs or India Pale Ales, uh, uh, a traditional British version India Pale Ale is quite different from an American craft version. So you have, you actually, if you're smart anyway, you take them each on their own merit. You don't compare this to this because they're two completely different styles, even though they're both called an India Pale Ale. Well, they're yeah. Well, the two, the, the stout and the porter, they they both have bitterness. Of course, the yeah. uh, the Polish porter was a lot more bitter than the, the Guinness stout, but they both have the rich, full-bodied texture and flavor, and and they do have the bitterness. I assume from the hops, and they're very similar beverages in in those ways and in color. But like you said, there is a difference between porter and stout, and now I, I understand. Now I'm, I'm educated as to what the difference is. And so. sometimes the differences are, are, are very subtle. You know, sometimes it's just extreme, extremely subtle differences. Okay. Well, okay. this is the conclusion of part two. And then we will continue with your second review on the second beer that I we haven't yeah, done before. 